quest where two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet and from you, the listener. My name is Professor Mark Sheriff, and Will's not here this week either. Oh my gosh, the summertime, you would think that it'd be a lot easier to schedule things, but it turns out when you're going on vacation or, you know, life just kind of gets in the way and, and timing is tough. Will just couldn't make it this week, so I'm back with another mini episode, a single question just for something to talk about, something that I just want to share, and okay, I'll be honest, you know, my my parents are on vacation and, and they need something to listen to on the way back. Hi mom, hi dad, love you very much, hope you're doing well. So, let's do a question that I think that anyone might be interested in, something you might be curious about if you do any, oh, I don't know, web browsing, maybe you're a person who uses the internet now that you're listening to a podcast. So yeah. Okay. So how about this? Have you ever been to a website recently and seen this thing pop up at the bottom that says, Hey, are you cool with cookies? Do you like cookies? Do you accept our cookies and think to yourself, why does my computer care about my obsession with chips? Ahoy cookies. I mean, they're delicious. They are soft. They are chewy. They come in that nice red bag, but how does it know that? Is there some sort of secret cookie monster out there that's looking, that's trying to find out exactly what sort of cookies I'm going for? Why? Why cookies? Okay, cookies are a silly word for what we're actually talking about here, but that's what they're called. They're called cookies. Okay, so what are cookies? A little internet browsing, browsing 101 for everyone today. How do cookies work? What exactly are they? Why should you care? And are there something to be worried about? First, let's actually talk about that thing that's been popping up that more and more that you see at the bottom of certain web pages. And it says something like, we use cookies to ensure we're giving you the best experience on our website. If you continue to use the site, we assume you're cool with it. And maybe it gives more information. We use cookies to ensure that we track what you're doing, things like that. Well, what happened? Well, what happened was in Europe, a regulation finally was fully enacted called the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. Now, in this, there is only one place it actually mentions cookies on the 88 pages of this document, and it reads, Natural persons may be associated with online identifiers provided by their devices, application tools, and protocols, such as IP addresses, cookie identifiers, or other identifiers such as RFID tags. This may leave traces, which in particular, when combined with unique identifiers and other information, may be used to create profiles of the natural persons and identify them. Now, the GDPR is all about trying to protect people's privacy and protect people's information. And they mention here in the actual document about cookies as being a way of identifying people. And you might have heard something like cookies are out there tracking you on the Internet. There's there's a snickerdoodle out there that's just out for you. And that snickerdoodle is just watching you 24 seven. OK, no, no. What is a cookie? Well, in simplest terms, a cookie is a single piece of information broken into two parts. One, what website gave you the cookie? Two, some string of information. Now, what that string is, is just a list of characters. It could be a word, a phrase, a URL, or in many cases, it would look like absolute garbage to anyone if you're just looking at it. It's just a string of information. That's it. It's not a virus. It's not malware. It is not something being put on your machine that is intentionally trying to steal your your credit card number or anything that it is literally just a little text file. Well, why do we have them? Well, we wouldn't want a web browser to be able to write files anywhere on your machine or even a lot of files onto your machine. I mean, yes, we download files. That's one way that they can write to your machine. But in the general use of a web browser, sometimes the web browser needs to, let's say, make a note needs to remember a little something on the machine that it's working with, your computer. So in the long, long ago in the way back time, when web browsers were first designed, there was this idea that, okay, it should be cool if a browser put just a little something on your machine, just a little something to let it remember what's going on. 
And that's where cookie came from. Why is it called a cookie? Believe it or not, there's a bunch of different theories about why it's actually called a cookie. The very technical one is that there is another thing called a magic cookie in the Unix operating system, which is a, which is a more technical operating system that is used to power a lot of the internet. And the idea of the magic cookie is it's a, it's a piece of information that the server can give back. That's boring. I don't like that explanation. I like the explanation that's something like the Hansel and Gretel explanation that Hansel and Gretel put down not breadcrumbs, but cookie crumbs to help them find their way. Okay. So, yeah, that's interesting because that's what a cookie lets you do. Another is it's like a fortune cookie. So you open up a fortune cookie. You have this little tiny piece of white paper that has something written on it, which by the way, the fa- my favorite one I've ever received said, your car will be trouble free for the next 10,000 miles. And that, that cookie knew nothing about my car because it didn't make another 10,000 miles. But either way, I can't expect a cookie to be, you know, a top rate mechanic. But regardless, if you have this small little white piece of paper. It has a little bit of information on it, something that you can reference later. So turns out if you go looking, there is basically numerous um, rumors or stories or folk tales about how it came to be called a cookie, which is just kind of cool, but eh, we're, we're, it's called cookie. So we're, we're sticking with cookie. So you go to a website. Why would that website want to put a cookie on your webpage? Well, let me give you the best example that I can think of, which is Amazon. You've been to Amazon. Everyone's been to Amazon. Jeff Bezos was very happy to tell us that everyone went to Amazon, helped pay for him to go to space. <laughs> Thanks, Bezos. That's great. Thanks so much. Okay. So when you go to Amazon and after you have logged in, there might be that little checkbox that says, remember me for later. So you click remember me for later. That's great. And now you come back to Amazon after you've turned off your machine, you come back the next day and lo and behold, Amazon knows who you are. Bezos is in your machine and watching you. No, it's the cookie. It's the cookie. So in that particular cookie, let's just, we'll just hypothesize a little bit here. The first part of the cookie says amazon.com because that's where it came from. The second part of the cookie is typically some sort of combination of your username plus some identifying characteristics about your your computer. So that way people can't, you know, steal your cookie and take it. (laughs) Ha ha ha, I've got your cookie. (laughs) Ha 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 ha, stole your cookie and go put it on their machine and somehow log in as you. No, there's there's usually some way that it's, encrypt is not quite the right word, but um, let's just say modified in such a way that that's not really possible. So then when you go to amazon.com, the very first thing amazon.com says is, oh, hey, uh, is there a cookie here? Is there something here that's going to tell me who this person is? And it finds that cookie and it sees that information and goes, oh, I know who this is. Not a problem. Come on in. You don't have to log in. You're cool. Come on in. Now, cookies do have expiration dates, which I love, just like cookies at the grocery store. If a cookie hits that expiration date, Amazon comes to your page and it says, oh, look, did you? Mm, this cookie expired two days ago. I'm going to delete it not going to log you in. Now you'll have to log in normally, type in your username and password, yada, yada, yada. Cookies expire. So any website that you go to that automatically will log you in after you've logged in previously because you click some checkbox that says, remember me, that is done through a cookie. It's a little tiny piece of information tells the website who you are. Why else might you have a cookie? Well, You could have a cookie because when you go to a website, maybe that website wants to keep up with things that you have looked at recently. And so it can then better give you uh, suggestions about what you should look at next. Um, Maybe it uses it to help remember what pages you went to in what order. So you could, you know, jump between different parts of the web page. You know, from a programming perspective, there's a ton of things that we can do with cookies. Anytime that we can have some little piece of information that we know that the user can hold on to that we can reference when they come back, that's pretty awesome. It is a good thing. We want cookies. We like cookies. Cookies are great and wonderful and delicious and awesome. They're not something to be afraid of. Usually. Like most cookies, like real cookies, you can abuse them. That sounds weird. 
uh, you can have too many of them. Uh, maybe it's more. You shouldn't take cookies from strangers. Wow, we're going into a weird territory here, but let's just roll with it for a bit. You go to a web page and there's a banner ad that pops up. You've seen banner ads. You, you know, you know the thing I'm talking about, you know, just a little rectangle at the top, you know, T-Mobile this buy a new air fryer. I don't know, whatever it happens to be that you might see. Now, ads on the internet tend to come from central locations. So let's just make one up. We're going to call it adsareawesome.com. Sure. Now, adsareawesome.com, a website says, hey, I want to make some money. So they go to adsareawesome.com and that web, that website, the owner of that website says, hey, adsareawesome.com, here's what I want. I want you to serve up some ads to me and I'm going to give you some spot on my web page. And then adsareawesome.com says, cool. Every time someone clicks one of those ads, we will give you a fraction of a penny. I actually don't know what the rates are nowadays, but not a ton of money, but we'll give you a little, little something because that shows that people clicked on those ads. Okay. And then companies pay money to ads or awesome.com to have their ads served. Now, kind of the golden, the, 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 the golden standard of what we want with advertising is to reach people who are actually interested in the thing that we're looking at. Right. You know, if I'm going to a website and it shows me pictures of air fryers, I'm not super interested in, I mean, I like cooking, but I'm not super interested in air fryers. Now, if it starts showing me things about, you know, Nintendo Switch or the Steam Deck or, you know, it, basically anything that has a battery in it, I'm probably, you know, some sort of technology. It's probably very exciting. Um, you know, that's that's more in line with what I want. How about I am going to, you know, I, I'm hungry and I've been searching up and down for a Chipotle that's open. And I go to a web page finally, and it says, hey, here's an ad for DoorDash. Don't you just want to just order this, this burrito? Just do it. Targeted ads are very useful. And I mean that for everyone, when done well, when not done intrusively, it is quote unquote better for the advertisers to be advertising to people who theoretically actually are interested in what they're, are, they're offering and for you know, everyday users, it's better for you because theoretically you are seeing ads for things that you might actually be interested in. When those two things don't line up, no one's happy. You're seeing stuff that you, it's just garbage on the screen and the advertisers aren't making, you know, they're, people aren't buying their stuff. So I, directed marketing, that, that targeted marketing is not necessarily bad. Okay. So don't, I, I don't want people to think that that's, you know, horrible, horrible, horrible. Now where people can get kind of caught up in this though, is when you think about, well, how do they actually know? <laughs> how do they, how did my computer know that that's what's going on? Okay. Well, here's how it works. Ads are awesome.com. When that banner ad pops up on your machine on that webpage, I'm going to just, you know, um, New York times. I don't know why I'm picking New York times, but sure. I'm going to New York times.com and a banner ad pops up. New York times doesn't have banner ads. Uh, some video game website that I go to, uh, nintendolife.com. They have banner ads. There you go. Nintendolife.com. It's good. It's a good website. Anyway, so a banner ad pops up there and ads are awesome.com. Uh, uh, Nintendo life says, Hey, ads are awesome.com. I need an ad for this person that's here. Okay. So ads are awesome.com loads the banner ad into the, the web page. But adsareawesome.com has their own cookie. Okay. So adsareawesome.com says, okay, I'm loading this. Look, I'm looking at the, the at your computer, seeing the cookie that adsareawesome.com saved there. And in adsareawesome.com's database, it says, oh, I recognize this cookie. I have served up this cookie to this person on nintendolife.com, The Verge, Polygon, Kotaku. I'm listing all video game and technology websites. So on adsareawesome.com's database, they don't necessarily know my name or they don't know, you know, my age necessarily, any of that stuff. But what they do know is that they have served an ad on those pages to that computer. So adsareawesome.com can better know, okay, I have seen five video game websites. Huh? 
if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it probably wants to see an advertisement for a Nintendo Switch game. Let me show that. And that's what it shows. So, if you were to look at the cookies on your machine, and you can, in any browser, you can go in and look at the cookies. It's in your settings. It's in various places for Chrome or Edge or Firefox or Safari, but you can find it. And you can actually see what these are. The ones that are, are kind of the most notorious for this will be from DoubleClick. Um, DoubleClick is just a well-known ad serving, ad tracking service that does a lot of this. Um, the other most well-known advertising company that's really good at this is Google. <laughs> <laughs> you think Google is a search engine company. Nah, they're the biggest advertising company in the world um, because they're really good at this because not only are they tracking you based upon what websites you go to, they also have your Google login. And so they quote unquote, see what is in your Gmail. They see what your Google searches are. So they have a, really good profile of the stuff that you're interested in. And if you want to look up what Google knows about you, you can go to accounts.google.com, log in with your Google ID, your Gmail ID, and you can see, and it says, here are the things, here are the topics that we believe you are interested in. Now, is there a person on the end of Google that is watching your information and thinking, oh, here, oh, here they come. Let's do this next thing. No, it's all automated. It's all behind the scenes. It's, it's, it is the computer doing the computer's thing automatically. So is it something, again, to be worried about? It depends, right? Um, you know, in my opinion, um, there is a limit to, to how much I'm willing to give up the advantages of being tracked to a degree because being able to go to a website and automatically log in or go to Google search and do a search and it knows the sorts of things I'm searching for um, and even being given more targeted ads, that's kind of the way that the internet works. And it is possible for you to go in and turn off all cookies, and that will severely limit some of the functionality that you might find on some websites. It's your decision. Every website should have a privacy policy. And uh, most websites, you go to the name of the website slash privacy something along those lines, but you can find the privacy policy for all of these websites. When you go there, don't be scared about trying to read a privacy policy from a website. Websites have gotten so much better at putting their privacy policies in more plain language to tell you, here's the information about you we collect, here is how we use it, and here's how we won't use it, and here's how you can redress any grievances that you have. Should I be more worried about certain websites? Maybe. But again, there's a level of where I feel comfortable and what I want out of my internet usage uh, such that I'm okay with it. I've read the privacy policies for Google and Facebook and Twitter and all these, and I don't use Facebook anymore. And I still use Twitter and I still use Google and I still use other services. It's a personal decision. If you're interested to see what happens, if you get rid of cookies, you probably, well, you might or might not have tried to use something like a privacy, a private window or an incognito tab, depending on the browser that you're using. You can pop open a new window. It's usually something like control shift N or control shift P, depending on the browser that you're in. And it'll spawn a new window that basically hides all of the current cookies on your machine. It treats like it is a fresh install to some degree. Sometimes you can turn on and off whether there's extensions or plugins or bookmarks or anything like that, but it will at least block your cookies. So if you go into one of those and you go to any Google site, it makes you log in again because the, the, the cookie that Google uses to log you in is gone. So go do that. If you want to see what it's like to go cookie free launch an incognito tab, launch a privacy tab, and go see what it's like. Go see what it's like to go to some of your favorite web pages and see if you like the experience that you have. I don't know what you're going to find. I don't know what website you go to. So yeah, it's going to be different for everybody. But at the end of the day, 
is a cookie in and to itself bad? No, it's not. It's not. It's a small piece of information that a website can put on your machine for, yes, tracking purposes, but think of it much more like, you know, like a post-it note that they left on your machine to some degree. When you come, when they come back, when you go back to that website, that post-it note might have some information that's really useful, like automatically logging you in or helping you find something you were searching for before. It's a reminder. Can it be used for the forces of evil? Sure. I mean, you know, because web pages load information from other web pages, more cookies, what we would call a third party cookie in those instances, can be loaded on your machine. Are those in unto themselves viruses? No. But if you go to multiple web pages that all are loading from that same website, Yes, a profile about who you, what, what your browsing habits are can be created. So if you're really worried about that, try an incognito tab, try a privacy tab, try going in and turning off cookies. But now you know, and it's, 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 it's better to know going in so that you know when you see all these pop-ups coming up and says, are you okay with cookies? Are you sure? I, I, are these chocolate chip cookies are really, really sweet. Are you sure okay with these cookies? And now you know. Now you know. So if you have another question that you would like for Will and I to take a look at, something about the internet, something about how your daily browsing works, something about technology that's coming out, anything that you want us to talk about. For instance... One thing we're going to talk about probably next week is the whole chip shortage that you've probably heard about and how that's affecting not only cars, but PlayStation 5s and other just consumer electronics. What exactly is a semiconductor? I'm going to go talk to my computer engineering friends and make sure I get it right. <laughs> so I hope you're doing great out there. I wish you the best. Thanks for listening. I hope to catch you next week. And as always, watch for falling goats. Take care. Bye.